Hi, my name is Fernando and I'm an illustrator based in Astoria, Queens. Um, my background is in illustration, graphic design, fine arts, and some mural work. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I go about my process in making art. Uh, lately I do a lot of digital stuff, like, a, like in Photoshop, but I love working so much with my hands. And so I'm going to show you how to come up with ideas to make your artwork um, and I'm going to show you uh, the tools that I use um, and the, the surfaces that I use. I, I paint with a range of different things, markers, pens, um, highlighters even, um, pencils, uh, spray paint, uh, oils, all these things. And as far as like materials, I use um, canvas, paper, uh, wood, anything, even sometimes I use sandpaper. Uh, but I'll show you all these things in just a little bit. All right? Bye. All right, guys. So in this segment, uh, this is going to be our workspace right here. I'm just going to go go over uh, the materials that I'm going to be using. Uh, all right. So this right here, you've probably seen this before, or maybe not. You've seen it like this. This is the same exact thing, but this is with wood, you know? I just have a separate piece of paper here just to test out my, my products, or not my products, but my materials. Um, so this is a woodless graphite. You can use that. They come in different gradients. Some go hard, uh, darker than others. This is a jelly roll pen. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but they just come in different colors and different thicknesses. Um, these right here are color markers or paint markers. Uh, so they carry paint inside right here and when you go to use them with the cap on just shake them you know so it gets the the, the pigments inside moving all right so you can uh, see how that works right there all right these are pretty much the same thing these are Posca's all these materials you can get them at your local art store all right I'm just gonna put that right there um, this is a regular sharpie you know I have different different types of sharpies I do it sometimes on the side uh, I test these uh, materials on the side sometimes because sometimes they um, they go dry and so uh, um, here's uh, some other markers that I have sometimes I use these this is just uh, straight black you know you can use these for outlines or for so many different things um, here's a pen you know it's good to practice your mark making too with different marks you can get different effects <clears throat> um, right this is a big big pen it's a it's a paint marker it's acrylic paint and uh, it makes big lines you know so if you want to cover a lot of lines uh, cover a lot of space you can either go thick or make it really thin okay <clears throat> um, here's a brush pen I like these you can use these for calligraphy or whatever have you uh, right here it has like a little pump right here. Whenever it's dry, uh, you can just pump it here in the middle, and then it can uh, you can get some of the the ink going. Uh, let's see, all right, so you can get that working like that. All right, um, I'm just gonna go over some materials that uh, I use sometimes. Uh, all right, so. A lot of times people they get mail and they just throw it out and I usually do that too but sometimes if you if you flip it inside out you can see like different patterns that you get all right um, and these are just some things that I collected sometimes when I do digital art sometimes I scan these and I incorporate this in, into some of the work that I do um, and you can use this for like different patterns for either lettering or for shirts or for skirts or for different different things um, so yeah, it's good to like keep a folder and and collect these and, and just use them uh, for whatever projects you have. Here's different construction paper that I that I have. Uh, so in, sometimes instead of of just coloring things in, you can use like these blocks of paper, just cut them out and use them for certain parts in your drawings or or artwork. Here's some a different type of construction paper. Um, yeah, they have these in grade school sometimes, but you can buy these at your local um, art store. All right, this is these are part of a these are pattern pages, pattern papers that I collected a while back ago. Someone gave me a book of pattern papers, and so 
you know, they're very diverse. You can use them for so many things, uh, different patterns, okay? Um, last but not least, um, here is some cardboard. Ooh, so magical. All right, so if you were to see this in the street, you wouldn't think anything of it, but uh, cardboard is very versatile, you know? I've used it many times to paint on, to color on, to draw on. Uh, you can... Um, you can attach it to canvas, you can put it together with paper, uh, and just so many things. The skies are the limits. Alright guys, so in this segment, um, I'm going to walk you through my process of how I put together uh, a design or, you know, or what I'm going to draw. Alright, uh, I'm just going to do a couple lines, you know, a couple things that I think about. First off, what am I drawing? You know, a theme. Um, so in this in this um, project, I'm gonna go with the theme of family, family, <laughs> and so um, you know, uh, and family to me is something that's really close. Unfortunately, right now I live far from my family, and so uh, I talk to them often, and um, and I think family is some something that most people can relate to. You know good feelings, the holidays, and you miss them when you when they're far away. Um, so also when I'm thinking of putting something together, an art piece, I also think about color, you know? Um, now you can pick between like two to three colors that you want to use. It's good not to do too many colors or too many bright colors or too many things, um, but you always want to have like options, you know? Um, so also you want to think of composition. Um, position. All right. And composition is basically how an image looks on a square or on a surface. You know, you can use that for painting. Um, they use this in this term in photography and videography. People do videos. All right, and I'll show you what I mean in a little bit, and uh, you want to take into account uh, the materials that you're going to use. Okay. Now, right now we're doing this list on you know how to put this together, but uh, to be honest, anything can inspire you when it comes to like theme. Um, uh, you can uh, music can inspire you, people inspire you, things that people say sometimes inspire you to to create something. Um, and so, yeah, so when we were talking about composition earlier, um, so here's, sometimes I do like little sketches, um, to pretty much give me an idea, like little samples to give me an idea of what the bigger picture is going to look like, you know, so sometimes people do more than one, but in this design or in this, um, art piece, um, I decided to have my like, buildings and necks on the ends. These are like buildings, people live here, maybe their offices, okay, right? And this is um, this grass, this is the floor, right? Bum, bum. And this is a house over here. Now it's not gonna look exactly like this, but you know, just a little bit. House. Sidewalk, maybe a fence, you know. Here's like the door, and maybe some people here, you know, family from here and up here with letters. going to be perfect, this isn't going to be perfect, but you know, it's just a little, um, a little sketch of, of what it's going to look like in the end, alright, so that's it for this segment of how to come up with ideas or how I come up with ideas uh, to make artwork, you know, and sometimes you just start as, as simple doodles, you know, like this, and then things come from here as well, you know, there's different, I, 
I do different um, ways of coming up with things, you know, and things sometimes come out of nowhere, you know, just drawing whatever comes to my head right now, you know, his nose, you know, he's a guy, he's, he's smiling, having a good old time, you know. big old smile <laughs> all right that's just a quick sketch all right guys so in this segment um, as I showed you uh, before this is my workstation um, and so I have some sheets of paper here that I have uh, put together that I've taped together using double-sided tape uh, scotch tape you can get this at your local store um, these are the other materials we're going to be using um, this is my exacto knife, or you can use uh, scissors. I got a pencil and a and a marker. These pieces right here, these are cardboards. These are going to be the the buildings. It's going to be a buildings on the side. It's going to be some letters on the top, a house in the middle, and the family. And uh, you'll see. All right. So I'm going to get started with this. I started off by um, putting these two uh, uh, pages together, and I wrote. Family in Spanish is familia. All right, so I'm just gonna go over these letters with um, this marker, and then I'm gonna cut them off. All right. <clears throat> and so one thing that's important that when you're doing art, um, nothing has to be perfect. You know, um, it can be as free as possible. That's part of the process. It's fun and magical. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess it should be a magical experience, why not? Um, it's very therapeutic, you know, I've always been drawing since I was little. I actually started uh, when I was younger uh, with um, coloring books. And so since then I've just been drawing things that I see and, and uh, yeah. So besides drawing and illustrating, I like doing letters too, you know. Um, I had a little bit of history with graffiti, so that some of that helps me a little bit with with uh, with these letters. Um, if not, you can always go online and see any different styles of of letters or fonts that you'd like to that you'd like to draw, you know. This isn't necessarily a graffiti style, but this is just my my style, you know. And everyone's gonna have their own style. Some people they're very they want their own style so fast, but a style develops with time, you know? and speed comes with time but never mind that your main focus should be to have fun you know to have fun all right now we're almost done here we're almost done okay all right now with our trusty now the reason why i have this in the back this is a piece of cardboard okay now you, you know you can either you know use it on this cardboard or on this cardboard but the point is so that when you use this a knife to cut uh, the paper out um, that you don't mess up the surface the table that you're going to be using all right um, so I'm just going to do some of this so that you can get the idea of um, how I go about doing things all right
right, so this is the first letter. This is the first letter of, uh, of this design that we're working on. Um, we just refine it, cut off some little extra pieces. All right, um, I'm going to get back to this in a little bit. I just wanted to show you how it's coming along. And you can already start to see it, you know, form against the white and this. All right, so I'm just going to put this over here for now. I'm going to get to the next step of, um, of this art piece. All right, I'm going to put this over here on the side. All right. So for this next part, this is going to be the house. Now, I know that this doesn't look like a house right now, but, um, but um, this right here is going to be the house. All right. And so... I've already drawn the house and how everything is going to look like on another sheet of paper. This is also my process, you know, before going on to the, the original piece. Um, I like to do like side sketches, like what I, something I did before. Um, but this is just really loose, all right? So I'm just going to do the, like the basic shape here, you know, what the house is going to look like. And this might be too light for you to see, but in the end you'll see how everything is going to come together. All right, so this is going to be the roof. All right. All right, it's going to look like that. Maybe a chimney right here. Everything doesn't have to be perfect, you know? And things, and you always want to keep it light, you know? You want to draw a light just in case you have to erase. Um, when I first started drawing, I used to draw really dark because, um, I don't know, I didn't know any better. But with time, you learn that if you draw light, you can always go back and erase. All right? So that's just that basic shape, okay? All right, guys. So um, as I was saying last, this right here is going to be the house. I know it doesn't look like much of a house right now. Um, so I'm just visualizing where things are going to go. The, the letters are going to be up there, these are going to be the buildings, um, and this is going to be the house. And so right here I have a separate sketch of, of the characters or the family that's going to be here by the house. Alright, so I'm just kind of like visualizing this here like that. Alright, I'm just going to start with like basic shapes right now, okay? When you are drawing anything, you always want to start with basic shapes. It's kind of like um, sculpting, you know? You don't, you don't go making the details first, you know? You have the whole block, uh, or the rock, or the big piece of clay, whatever you're sculpting, and then you start, and you start chipping from there, all right? So this is the family. I know it looks like a little house, but it's not. This is just the, the overall shape of them together, all right? Uh, this is them. Just basic shapes, guys. Just keep it simple. Basic shapes. And then as you, as you keep going, um, you start refining them. But it's very important that when you're drawing, your drawing is light. You know, if you need to erase, you erase. Um, I used to draw, when I first started drawing, I would draw with dark lines. And I think we mostly start doing that just because we don't know any other way, you know. But um, it's good to draw light because if you have any mistakes, you can easily take them away. All right, this doesn't look like much right now. You'll see in the end what it looks like. Um, Alright. Shapes. Alright. This is the little guy. So this one right here is going to be the dad, the mom, the sister, and the son. That's me. You know, even though I'm tall, I'm 6'2. <laughs> 
I still see my family this way, you know? And I feel like my parents still see um, their kids as little kids, although we're, we're huge now. <laughs> Not too huge, but big enough. <laughs> All right, so um, <clears throat> the next segment, I'll show you this uh, more clear and more refined. All right, guys, so this is the end result of our project titled uh, Familia in Spanish for family. Um, <clears throat> so right here to the left, you can see these brown pieces are actually buildings, like I said to you before. Um, in the windows, it had like little details, like an air conditioner, or just windows, or just drapes, or curtains. Um, over here, you can see I have cutouts of, um, of clouds. Um, I drew them out with Sharpies, or with markers, and then I cut them out. I did the same thing with this, as you saw me first doing. This was the house that I first drew out. Uh, I went over it with uh, a marker and just did some details and cut it out. Uh, I added some greenery, some grass, some bushes. And so you see that not everything is like perfectly straight, perfectly lined up. That's just my style and I, that's how I do things. I have a little fence here and here. Um, the main event obviously is family. Um, here's the father, here's the mother, here's my sister and me. Um, and so over here's a, a, another building uh, kind of to close in um, on and to bring more attention to the main focus, which is right here. Um, so basically the theme or the thought behind all this is, you know, um, my family is in a different uh, state. So, you know, when I think about family, I think about good things, you know, and this over here just represents New York in a symbolic way. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I thank you guys for uh, watching and I hope that something that you guys learned here you can sh use or share and apply to your work. And uh, thank you. It was a blast. Bye.